screen, I'm unable to see the uh, Zoom meeting window, right? So this is the first thing. So yeah, quick revision series. So the idea of this particular series is to revise the important topics again and again, and to give you a crisp note so that you can also go back and revise it multiple times. Because prelims is, again, the, the kind of paper that they are setting these days, it's getting tougher and tougher. So what's there in hand? The topics that we have already read and the topics that are there in current affairs, these things are in hand. And so that we can go back and revise them again and again. And rest depends upon our understanding and our application. So that part again, we'll start discussing that particular portion in the month of March as well. But first things first, Whatever you have read till now in the you know, static portion as well as in the current affairs portion, we will start providing you the quick revision notes in this series. So for this open session, we have selected the topic of mapping. So this particular topic, again, this, this lecture will not be comprising of all the topics of mapping, but a small glimpse of mapping will be provided to you, how you should study and what, uh, what is going to be there in the mapping content as well, because we will be uploading recorded lectures as well as live lectures from every other topic or every other subject of the syllabus. So the first subject is mapping and uh, there will be, I think, eight to 10 uh, lectures, including the recorded ones that will be provided if you join the quick revision series. And uh, this particular lecture will give you the glimpse of what could be the content of the uh, revision series for mapping, right? So this session is obviously open for all. So yeah, first things first, how to approach the map work. I think uh, by now you people have pasted the world map, political, physical, and India map, political, physical in front of your study table, because that's the must. That's the basic or primary or necessary requirement to revise map again and again. Because for, as far as map work is concerned, you cannot go back to your notes and revise them time and again. It, it becomes very tedious task, right? If you are pasting the maps in front of your study table, you can revise them multiple times in a day while just before going back to your bed or just before starting your study at the particular study table, right? So that's how multiple revision of maps can be done. And it's also a, an exercise that that keeps you uh, involved in the study without burdening you, right? So that's that's one of the positive aspect of map work. So first point is you need to cover the traditional locations and physical features, right? And what's there in physical features? Mountains, passes, rivers and their tributaries. These, these physical features involving world map as well as India's map. Water bodies. Water bodies, including ocean, lakes, backwaters, etc. Multiple waterfalls are there. Waterfalls are uh, mostly there in the India map. There are two, three waterfalls that are famous for the world map. Islands, right? Natural resources. What are the natural resources found mostly in India, but few of the rare metals that are found across the world as well. And ocean currents, right? And if any other physical feature that I have left out, you need to include that as well. But these are the uh, uh, most, most common physical feature that you need to be reading in your map work. So keep a tab on the current affairs. After reading the traditional location, keep a tab on current affairs because this is the point where you people will start revising stuff, where you will start revising what you have been reading for the past one, one and a half or two years, right? And in those particular stuff, you obviously will be revising the contents of current affairs. So the pointers of current affairs, the location that are getting repeated time and again, for example, the Ukraine war is there in the news for past one, one and a half years, right? The current Israel versus Hamas war was there. So there are multiple locations that are coming in news time and again. So you need to be uh, taking that out from the textbook put them in your notes and mark it on the map itself and revise it. So th these, are, these are the basic steps for uh, preparing any topic apart from map, any other topic as well. Regular revision of the locations, paste the world map and India map in front of your study desk. Try to solve online quizzes. 
yeah it's it's also an important hack because uh, most of the times it's very difficult to revise things or to memorize things or to remember them at the time when they are required so there are multiple online quizzes for example you need to remember the uh, countries and capitals name of the continent of africa so you can go and follow any online sources you can solve any short quizzes 10 or 20 question quiz right that particular quiz may not be from a upsc background but the questions will be relevant to you and it will start feeding your mind and your mind will start revising the content in one way or the other right it, it's just a small hack that you can follow secondly there are two ways to study a map first is thematic thematic study and other is regional study so in thematic study you are picking one theme for example mountains right and after picking this theme you are studying mountains across the world or you are studying mountains across the country of india you are not dividing india into multiple sections like southern india northeastern india and studying it because this is the thematic study where you will be picking up a theme let's say rivers then you will start studying rivers of the world let's say mountains or any other physical feature and in this regional study you will pick up a small region for example south india southern part of india and then you will start studying the mountains the rivers the passes the waterfalls right so this comes under the regional study of map where you are picking a small region and you are studying all the themes that you have been studying across the world in that small region right so that's how you should be uh, approaching towards your map work i hope things are clear right so picking up the thematic study there are two three slides where i have picked up the thematic study where i'll be studying i'll be discussing uh, some of the important uh, physical features across the world and then i'll go back to the regional study where i'll be studying small portions of world map as well as the map of india so as far as thematic study is concerned we will study the grasslands across the world right so grasslands there are two type of grasslands temperate grassland and tropical grasslands so the differentiation is based upon the latitudinal location right it's it's very clear you people must have read in your theoretical portion as well and uh, as far as temperate grasslands are con uh, concerned the precipitation in these grasslands are majorly in the form of dew or snow right uh, precipitation is not the major form of uh, right rainfall is not the major form of precipitation but dew and snow is and they usually face the extreme climates now coming into individual grasslands for example this particular glass grassland is pampas right second one is this one is prairies prairies are in north america this one here are veld <clears throat> it is pronounced as veld veld these are uh, beside the location of drakensberg mountain in the country of south africa they are majorly in south african region next one is steppes right steppes are quite popular because of uh, the ukraine war that's going on right now next one are downs this one is steppe fourth next are downs downs are in australia region right they majorly lies between the murray darling basin there is a murray river there is a darling river in australia and downs are majorly lying between these two rivers ustaz ustaz are present in the part of hungary they are in europe completely in europe and steppes steppes are present in asia as well as in europe right last one is canterbury plains so canterbury plains are present in new zealand so new zealand map is not included in this particular 
portion so i'm drawing it so canterbury plains are located somewhere here right this one is the map of new zealand the approximate map of new zealand now coming on to the tropical grassland savanna very popular this particular portion is the savanna region and they majorly lies in the eastern africa right savanna is the portion uh, where wild animals roam freely because you can you can go there you can visit the national park and easily see wild animals like giraffe like zebra like lions roaming freely because the the visual appearance of savanna is such that there are multiple grasses because it's a grassland and there are sporadic trees right so unlike the forest that are present in india and it is very difficult to find the wild animals if you have tried uh, in your life to go for a wildlife safari it's very difficult to find a lion it's very difficult to find a tiger right but it's very easy to find them on savanna region so it is usually called as big big game countries so savanna is done next is campos so campos grassland lies majorly in brazil this particular portion right campos and the last one is lanos so lanos is somewhere around here yeah so now what kind of questions can be asked they can ask you to arrange them from north to south or east to west there can be a question of match the column where they will give you the name of the grassland and the name of the country as well and then they can tell you to match the column match the uh, grasslands or whether the match is correct or not correct they can ask you only one pair correct only two pair correct all the pairs are correct so that's where these are these are some very important grasslands very important famous grasslands so you people need to be aware of uh, last one is selvas so selvas are equatorial climate grasslands they are present in again brazil in this region uh, i think it's, it's here right the selvas are there in brazil right any doubt till now the session is going to be a smaller one it is not going to be a, a discussion session that we used to have with our test papers that goes on for 2 to 1/2 hours this particular session will be a smaller one where i'll be picking uh, very few topics and uh, just to give you the glimpse of the quick revision series that we are trying to project right moving on to yeah here you can see uh, selvas clearly right lanos uh pampas right so just to give you some more clarity i picked up this individual map of south america to give you some uh, clear pictures right now coming on to this graph small graph so this graph uh, shows the grassland there are multiple ecosystem but i'll just focus upon the grasslands right now right this one portion is for grassland the y axis is mean annual temperature that's why it is degree centigrade the x axis is the precipitation that means the uh, rainfall now this the area of grassland can be divided into two sections the temperate grasslands as well as the tropical grasslands so this particular portion can be divided uh, called as temperate grassland and this one can be called as the tropical grasslands so if you remember this kind of map you will also remember the variation of annual temperature as well as the variation of annual precipitation of any kind of ecosystem that can come in your exam for example tropical forest let's say tropical forest it has very high range of annual precipitation right the annual precipitation varies from 150 cm to 400 cm but the variation of temperature is very minimal 
just three four degrees the variation of three four degrees that's it and at the same time when you see the variation of temperature temperature in grasslands it varies a lot it starts from minus five degrees centigrade and goes till 25 degrees centigrade so a 30 degree variation is there at the same time the variation of annual precipitation is very less right it is between 50 to 75 centimeters of rainfall that's it so that's how you can uh, keep these small comparison in your mind and uh, this particular map will come handy to solve multiple questions as far as environment environmental science is concerned right clear this this diagram is clear yes sir please, please. yeah okay Okay, I'll move on to the next slide, the deserts of the world, right? Again, this is a thematic study where I'll be discussing deserts all across the world. So let's start the deserts from North America. So mostly the North American deserts are lying towards the western part of the continent. And why so? Because there are Rockies mountains that are located over here. And this particular portion where the deserts are present lies mostly in the leeward side of the mountain. So as we all know that the leeward side do not receive a high amount of rainfall and a desert is defined by the amount of precipitation they receive. So if an area is receiving less than 25 centimeter of rainfall, that particular region will be called as a desert, right? So there are usually four or five popular names in North America that are termed as desert. All are lying in this particular section. One is Great Basin Desert. Other is Mojave Desert. Next one is Sonoran Desert, Painted Desert and Chinhuahua Desert. Right. So they are usually north to south. So as far as North America is concerned or any particular continent is concerned, you need to just remember the specific names of the desert and an approximate location. Because while going to the exam, they will not ask the desert from a single continent. They will ask the desert from multiple continents. If they are asking to arrange them from north to south or east to west. right? So you need not to be worrying regarding the specific location of these deserts. Because they, it will get very clumsy and uh, it will be difficult for you to remember things. Moving on to South America. So this particular section is... Uh, desert oriented section and there are two important reasons why this particular section is the desert uh, region. The first one is the Peruvian current. Peruvian current or Humboldt current. Right? It results into desiccation effect of the Chile Peru region and because of which there are two deserts. Secura Desert and Atacama Desert. Right, Secura and Atacama are adjacent to each other. The northern part is Secura and the southern part is Atacama. Right. So the Humboldt current is the reason for the desert formation in these two deserts. Next one is the Patagonia Desert. So this particular desert lies some, somewhere over here. And the main reason is falling towards the leeward portion of Andes mountains. Right? So just like Rockies, there are Andes over here. They run from north to south in South America. Right? So Patagonia is done. Moving on to Africa, the famous one is Sahara Desert. So this one is Sahara. But again, Sahara has been divided into multiple names uh, because it covers many countries. So you can go back and read some of the some of the important names or few names uh, if, if, if they comes in exam, but they're not very important. So you can stick to the name of Sahara itself. Next one is Kalahari Desert, Namib Desert, right? They are lying towards here. And again, a cold current is responsible for them being called as desert. Which cold current is responsible? 
Can anyone name? Anyone? Sir, is it Bengala curry? Yeah, it is Bengala curry. Right, so because of this current, the desiccation effect occurs and the region gets deserted. Next one is Karoo. So the Karoo deserts are lying in the South Africa region and it's a local name that has been given to the uh, desert and it is uh, usually in the continuation of Kalahari desert itself. Danakil desert is also there. It's, uh, it's, it's there in uh, somewhere here, right? Uh, just a minute, I'll, I'll just confirm the location of the Nakil Desert. Yeah, the Nakil Desert is located here. In the region of Djibouti, in the region of Eridria, right? So that particular, in the region of uh, Northeastern Ethiopia. So the Horn of Africa, you can you can popularly call as the Horn of Africa has a desert called Danakil Desert. Now moving on to the map of Asia. So in Asia, uh, very famous are Taklamakan Desert and Gobi Desert. Right, the location is has been marked over here. In the Central Asian region, Karakum Desert is there, which majorly lies in Turkmenistan. 70% of that particular desert is in Turkmenistan. And there are deserts in Saudi Arabia as well as in Iran. So we will be discussing them in uh, next slides while we'll study the uh, regional maps. Right. So the Asian deserts are done. Next comes the deserts of Australia. So in Australia, you can easily remember the names of the desert. Great Victoria, Great Sandy, Tanami and Gibson Desert. Because Australia, in Australia, the uh, the habitable portion is lying towards the coast only, right? This one, this one, and somewhere around here. And major part of Australia is a desert. Major part of Australia that is lying in the central part of it or towards the western part of Australia, major part is desert. So you can just remember these particular names: Great Victoria, Great Sandy, Tanami, and Gibson Desert. Right? So these are new names to multiple uh, people, right? And uh, you need to revise them again and again. So I'll share the PDF of these slides as well for your quick revision. So yeah, this will help down further to revise the content, right? Now, the thematic study is done. Now comes the regional study, right? So you people got the idea, right? How, how thematic study can be implemented in the study of maps, isn't it? Because there are there will be other portion that I will discuss in future lectures like mountains of the world will be discussed, rivers of the world will be discussed, right? So there will be multiple themes that I'll be picking up in future lectures, but this is just two important themes that I've been discussing in the open session. Now the regional study. So for regional study, I have picked up the map of Southeast uh, Middle East. So Middle East is a term given by uh, US and West Asia is a term given by India. So Middle East and West Asia are one and the same thing. The major portion of Middle East are Iran, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Jordan, part of Egypt, this particular portion of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, right, and Bahrain. So these are the major parts of uh, Middle East Asia. Turkey and Georgia, Azerbaijan also comes under it, but they are not frequently in news as far as current affairs for international relations is concerned. But these all countries are very important. So we need to study them uh, thoroughly, right? So if you start studying the regional maps, you will dig down further. For example, uh, Israel versus Gaza, Israel versus Hamas war is going on and Gaza Strip is in news for past uh, four or five months, starting from October. So Gaza is a very small strip that is present towards the western part of Israel. Gaza 
is the part of Palestinian territory, and a, a major part of Palestinian territory is present in the eastern boundaries of Israel, eastern parts of Israel, right? So this is the portion of Palestinian territory, and this is Gaza. So the Gaza Strip, uh, there are three crossings that has been in news: Erez Crossing, Rafa Crossing. And Kerem Shalom goods crossing. Shalom is a very specific word of Israel. Is a it's a Jewish word uh, for Namaste or Vanakam that we used to do in India, right? So Rafa crossing uh, is the entry point between Egypt and Gaza. Erez crossing is the entry point between Gaza and Israel. Again, Kerem Shalom is. Also, the entry point uh, between Gaza and Israel. Gaza is a section which has been divided into three, four districts. So there are multiple districts in Gaza Strip. Uh, for example, Khan Yunus is one of the district. Wadi Gaza is one of the district. Gaza is a city as well in the Gaza Strip area, right? So you people just just keep a tab on uh, this particular development and start revising these things because. Again, these things will be new to you, so the name should start rhyming in your mind. And Gaza is bouncing uh, or facing towards Mediterranean Sea, so there is only one opening for Gaza as far as ocean or sea is concerned. It's Mediterranean Sea, and Gazans cannot access the complete part of Mediterranean Sea. A very small small part of the sea is accessible for them, and beyond that, they are under the Israeli's control. Now, coming into the map of Israel, so we are doing the regional study of Middle East one by one, right? If if I start discussing this particular map here, so it will become very confusing and clumsy for me as well. So that's why I'm picking up country by country. So I'll pick up three four important countries. Now, coming into the map of Israel, the important points are Golan Heights. as the name suggests it's a portion of higher altitude which receives rainfall uh, more than at least more rainfall than the adjacent areas so it becomes a very important source for fresh water so that's why every other country which is powerful wants to have their control over golan heights so currently golan heights is under control of israel west bank so this one is the west bank which is lying towards the east of israel right so the west bank is called as west bank because they are lying towards the western part of the jordan river this is the jordan river that's flowing and dividing the country of israel and jordan so that's why this particular bank is known as west bank right and the jordan river is feeding the dead sea dead sea is one of the saltiest sea in the world because of uh, evaporation uh, as it lies in the uh, subtropical region of the world so dead sea is one of the saltiest and uh, there is there is no aquatic life form that can exist in the the level of saltiness that is present over here right so that's what dead sea is all about west bank is done jordan river is feeding the dead sea sinai peninsula so this particular region i'll show you in this map yeah this particular region it's known as sinai peninsula right so sinai peninsula is surrounded by a uh, gulf of suez and gulf of aqaba Gulf of Aqaba is towards the east, and Gulf of Suez is towards the western part of Sinai Peninsula, right? And Gulf of Suez also has the Suez Canal, as we all know. Suez Canal was also in news, and it connects it connects the Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea, right? Yeah. Gulf of Aqaba is done. Mediterranean Sea. is towards the western part of israel now there are important locations that you need to be aware of they are jerusalem jerusalem is the, the hotbed 
for four religions right so holy war that you must be reading in your uh, world history uh, the origin point of holy war is jerusalem or the reason for holy war is jerusalem tel aviv tel aviv is the location where multiple countries have their embassies tel aviv is a very important city in the israel the largest one the uh, techiest one right and one important port of israel is in haifa and this is the gaza strip that we have already seen this is the west bank right so these are the important location in israel now moving on to the next country saudi arabia first the deserts because saudi arabia has uh, the major portion of saudi arabia is surrounded by deserts the important one are annafood rubal khali right these two deserts are important which are connected by naj desert Hejaz mountains are there. Hejaz mountains are actually the escarpment. Right. Mountains are something like this, where you will have an ascent as well as the descent. Escarpment is a location where you will only have ascent and then there will be a large plateau. So if a person standing over here he will see that there is a large mountain present because he cannot see the descent from the other side but they are actually the escarpment where the ascent can be seen but it it has a largest part as a as a plateau it hejaz mountains so hejaz is the location where the neom city is city is coming up if you people have heard about this city Neom city is coming up beside the Hejaz region, somewhere around here. Now, the important location, important location are obviously Makkah, Medina and Jeddah. Jeddah is, a, is an important port of Saudi Arabia and Riyadh is the capital of Saudi Arabia. Right? And Saudi is surrounded by Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain is also here, but it's not mentioned in this particular map, but Bahrain is also there. UAE, Yemen, Oman. Right? And the water bodies, it has a Red Sea towards west, the Persian Gulf towards the east, the Gulf of Aden. No, the Gulf of Aden is uh, touching Oman and Yemen. Right? So these two important water bodies that are present. Gulf of Aqaba is also there touching Saudi Arabia. Right. So yeah, these are the pointers for Saudi Arabia. Now, coming to Iran. Iran is also an uh, important part of Middle East. India and Iran has uh, historical relations cultural relation as well because Iran is a Shia dominated Shia dominated state and rest all other countries in the Middle East are dominated by Sunni Muslims. So Iran is dominated by Shia Muslims and uh, Shia Muslims ha have been inhabited in India in large numbers. So that's the main reason between the strong relationship between Iran and India. And there are multiple other pointers like Iran is a resource rich region. Iran has a strong control towards Strait of Hormuz from where the oil of India gets traveled. Right. So India has a slight obligation to have good relationship with Iran so that Iran allows the free movement of ships that are bound towards India carrying the oil. So the mountains, as far as mountains are concerned, Zagros mountain, these are important. Zagros mountain and Elbrus mountain. So most part of Iran is like an intermountain plateau. Right? There are multiple types of plateau and one type is intermountain plateau. 
so major part of iran is just like that intermountain plateau is a plateau which is lying between two different mountains so here one mountain is elbrus and other is zagros next one is a desert so dast e kavir and dast e lut these are two deserts that uh, needs to be read with tehran tehran is the capital of iran it is lying towards the northern portion of iran and iran is also bordering caspian sea this one is this particular lake is lake urmia right lake urmia lakes around the world are very important topics as far as upsc is concerned because they have been asking lakes across the world uh, time and again and in all probability they will all again ask in 2024 as well in one way or the other that can be can be a straight forward question or there can be a multiple uh, uh, option questions where you will be marking them or matching them with the related country persian gulf as far as water body is concerned persian gulf strait of hormuz gulf of oman and the caspian sea right now the important location so there is one chabahar port that is located over here so chabahar port that has that was being developed by india but it is a point of contention between iran india and china nowadays because china wants to capture chabahar port and take a complete control over chabahar port there is one port called bandar abbas bandar abbas is located towards the state of hormuz strait of hormuz persian gulf bandar abbas chabahar port gulf of oman okay so all the important pointers are done as far as iran is concerned right and iran is bordering turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan iran and pakistan again they both were in news very recently because iran has fired missile towards the baluchistan area of pakistan and in reply to that pakistan has also fired missiles in the iranian territory right so that's why this for this portion becomes a bit important right so that's how we will be covering slowly and steadily all the map across the world picking up multiple themes picking up multiple regions like i have picked the small region of middle east and then i have dig down into specific countries and started discussing it right so if you people wants to do it on your own you can also do it on your own but the pattern of study should be similar you should be studying the physical features you should be studying the important locations that can be done on your own as well but if you want to join it will be easier for you because we will be doing the hard work and presenting you the map so you just need to uh, take the lectures take the pointers and revise them continuously but the revision part is uh, uncompromisable that needs to be done by you only now switching into the map of india the focus point should be the physical features that i have been discussing in the uh, first or second slide which had included mountains rivers tributaries passes try to study the region wise map right because in in india there are multiple pointers so if you start uh, studying in uh, picking up the specific region for example picking up the northeast region or picking up the southern india region picking up the north northern india and studying it on the regional basis i think that becomes a bit easier and it becomes easier to interconnect the dots revise them regularly and lakes are again lakes are important the ramsar sites are important so picking up the southern india portion and studying the hills so studying the hills i am picking up the peninsular india which is majorly lying towards the southern part of india so the peninsular india is bordered by aravallis western ghats the eastern ghats the chhota nagpur plateau parts of vindhyachal and this one and again a small part of meghalaya right because there is a malda gap present over here you people must have read while studying the theory portion of peninsular plateau right so this these are the boundaries of peninsular plateau that's how we define the peninsular plateau region 
now picking up specific location or, or specific hills starting from aravallis so aravallis start from northern portion of gujarat and goes till delhi the delhi ridge is present so people who belongs to delhi or who are studying in delhi you must have uh, read about delhi ridge so delhi ridge is the part of aravalli range mount abu is a location which lies on the aravalli range and that particular peak is called as guru shikhar peak so aravalli's highest peak is guru shikhar peak coming on to vindhyas so vindhyas again start towards the western portion of gujarat and goes till sasaram in bihar right kamur hills are also the part of vindhyas because see vindhya vindhyan ranges are quite big and they are quite stretched so there are multiple regional names that has been given to these ranges so one of the regional name is kamur hills others are vindhyas scarp lands right so they all are majorly the part of vindhyas next one is satpuras so if i zoom it further so these are the satpura mountain ranges and it will comprise of gavilgad hills the mahadev hills maikal ranges milan hills right then comes the satmala hills satmala satmala hills also has ajanta range then comes the balaghat range and the harishchandra range they all lies in the state of maharashtra then uh, this particular region this particular region is the part of western ghats western ghats are locally named as sahyadri sahyadri in which state they are known as sahyadris in which state maharashtra Anyone? sir yes and in the region of maharashtra kalsubai peak is the highest peak of western ghats right and as you come down towards the state of kerala and tamil nadu western ghats meets meets with eastern ghats in the region of nilgiri hills the eastern ghats are very much denuded they are they have been eroded because they are one of the oldest mountains and they are older older than western ghats so western ghats are quite continuous they they have a quite higher altitude as compared to the eastern ghats but eastern ghats have been broken apart into multiple parts that's why they have been termed as nallamalla hills venukonda palikonda hills right javdi hills so these all are part of eastern ghats but they are separated by multiple passes as far as western ghat is concerned there are uh, only two three passes that are present near the location of nasik near the location of pune which we call as thalghat and bhorghat there is palakkad gap that is present uh, just just below the nilgiri hills palakkad gap is there shenkotta gap is also present towards the uh, further south southern portion of uh, western ghats and there are individual peaks like doda beta peak anai malai hills anai mudi peaks right and coming to the yes cardamom hills are also there coming to the eastern ghats the very important are seshachalam hills seshachalam hills the name is written over this side but the location of hills is here chevroy hills are also important the important uh, Uh, reserve of heavy metals palni hills are important right so you people must be remembering palni hills shivroy hills javdi hills palikonda venikonda nallamala hills and northern sarkars right moving northwards gadjat hills are located in the region of odisha ramgad hills are there in the region of uh, chatisgarh as well as in jharkhand area and rajmahal hills are there in the part of uh, chhota nagpur plateau right 
and this particular location that has been marked they are garo khasi and jaintia hills and they are located in the state of meghalaya and they have been named in the name of uh, local tribes the famous tribes that are uh, habiting inhabiting uh, the state so that's what now coming towards the major rivers right so i have picked a small area and then i am applying every other theme into that particular area so this particular study is known as the regional study where i am picking up a region and then studying it one by one so major rivers major rivers are uh, kaveri which arises from the region of karnataka and then meets the bay of bengal portion in tamil nadu right kaveri is very important river and it is important because around 97% of the water has been utilized by human kind on and only 3 to 4% of the water goes into the sea right so there are multiple positives as well as the negatives of this particular fact because if the uh, negative points are concerned uh, the aquatic life gets impacted a lot because the content of water gets reduces slowly and steadily as it moves towards the ocean right as it moves towards the sea the next important river is of course the krishna river right and uh, nagarjuna sagar dam is located on the krishna river itself there is an impo uh, another important river is godavari river and there is a important lake called koleru lake so koleru lake lies between godavari and krishna and they are fed by the distributaries of godavari and krishna right so they are not directly fed by godavari and krishna but the distributaries of theirs another important lake is pulikat lake so pulikat lake is present in two states one is andhra pradesh and the other one is tamil nadu another important river is uh, vagai river that is present in further south another important rivers are penna as well as palar right now what you have to do on your own is to study the tributaries of krishna godavari and kaveri at least right by studying these tributaries of the rivers you will be very much clear about the study of river basins and these are very important river basins so there are small small rivers but important tributaries which cannot be discussed on a map itself and the map pointer will not be asked in the exam as well but those tributaries can be asked in the statement type questions right so that particular thing you need to do on your own there are multiple reservoirs again there are multiple reservoirs that are present in southern india so nagarjuna sagar dam is one of them one of the reservoir there is stanley reservoir that is present in the river of kaveri right so these kind of reservoirs you need to uh, take a note out of them and try to revise them again and again so that that gets stored in your mind and if the question comes it becomes easier for you see nizam sagar dam is also there in godavari river right so yeah similarly all the region across the world as well as india will be covered in quick revision series right so i'll be uploading uh, recorded lectures as well as live lectures will also be conducted so while while discussing the very current location i will be taking the live lectures and while discussing the static portion of the map i will be recording the lectures and posting it on frequent basis from tomorrow onwards so you will be getting this particular type of content and apart from mapping all other subjects will get covered slowly and steadily in this particular format only where multiple lectures will be taken live as well as recorded sessions will be shared with you so that see the main idea is to get you people revise things again and again in quick time so that's how these this is the uh, easiest method that we have 
uh, we have thought about and we are trying to follow this particular method right so if you all know that a uh, quick revision series is only for 999 and uh, by joining this particular series you will be a part of a closed group where the lectures will be conducted the recorded lectures will be shared and yeah you will be benefiting in one way or the other so uh, i'm finishing this particular session right now any doubt any doubt regarding this session i'll be sharing this pdf as well anyone any doubt so regarding the revision yeah. i would like to ask a question okay so actually uh, right now i have been focusing on the sections i haven't like science and maths but mm -hmm. uh, the thing is my revision was getting compromised because of that so right now i have increased my uh, time to actually revise modified my schedule a bit but still uh, i feel like i am doing uh, four subjects in a day which is not okay and uh, it it makes uh, it doesn't make uh, that fruitful to have four subjects at a time studying four subjects at a time so i just wanted to ask how should i manage this thing of uh, preparing these many subjects within this uh, 20 25 uh days See, or lesser than that there are there are the syllabus is huge actually right so you you need to have a positive feeling that yes you are going in the right path and you are covering syllabus one by one and things are getting stored in your mind in a substantial amount of time in a substantial amount of content right so first things first it's very difficult to cover syllabus from cover to cover and then start solving questions so this is the time taking process so what you can do is yes you cannot you cannot study four subjects in a day that's uh, that that's not a good way of studying you should be yes. picking two subjects or at max uh, three subject and the third subject being the map which is the very lighter one right okay. so for doing this try to pick one subject for next 3 4 days give all of your time and try to solve a paper towards the end of fourth or fifth day so that's how you will start uh, you will start getting the positive feeling that yes i am covering the subject i am applying the knowledge that i have read and i am getting this much questions as correct this much questions as wrong because you need to also analyze the reason behind why you are choosing the wrong options right because it is it is not only the game of knowledge you must be knowing the right answer but still you are choosing the wrong option yes sir. so that so that is the stage of analysis and that is the stage of analysis you should be reaching for individual subjects one by one so let's say for example you are doing this for economy and after four or five days you are giving a test of economy not if you if not giving a test if you are solving 200 300, 300 questions of economy yes. then also it's fine but you need to have a feeling that yes my economy is prepared i can put it aside or i can pick it up for revision right so i need not to start from scratch so that's how things will start getting prepared one by one and things will get manageable because towards the end as the last month starts you obviously will be reading three four subjects in a day but yeah. with the point of view of revision yeah right so that's and, how things uh, so like yeah. uh, we have this uh, ghatna chapter so right now uh, what i have been doing for my revision is um, picking up the topics like lakshmi kant uh, citizenship or historical background and doing uh, these kind of like topic wise pyqs from ghatna chat so like uh, right now my approach have been this should i uh, start solving pyq like uh, in exam kind of atmosphere or uh, should i just like do it from gatna chapter right now because i have done two subjects from that like as far as, uh, my as, far as i and, know gatna yeah. chapter is the compilation of previous year papers only right yes sir and it, the previous year papers of multiple states like state pcs yes sir right so those type of question will not help you to solve the 
type of question being asked in UPSC because the questions that are there in state PCS are majorly factual questions. So you obviously will be revising the factual content with by solving Ghatna Chakra, but you are lacking the application of knowledge that is required for civil services exam. So apart from Ghatna Chakra, I will also suggest you to solve the uh, coaching test series as well, which are available, uh, easily available in the market, in the telegram groups. And after some time, you need to switch to solving uh, previous year papers, which we also be picking and start discussing in our Prayas uh, group that is there. And from the month of March onwards, we will be start discussing the previous year papers because by solving previous year paper, you get to know that how to reach to the right answer. Because that's what the main aim is all about. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, so if no doubt is there, so I will be concluding this session. And uh, if, if, if it feels like you people should join the quick revision series, that will be fruitful for you. And the type of content that we are preparing, it will be exam oriented and you will definitely get benefited from the content that will get delivered. Right. So, yeah, I'll be concluding it. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.